I've included some uh, compression examples on the companion disc, um, but let's quickly go through some of the main parameters that are, are on your average compressor. The big three are threshold, ratio, and makeup gain. Now, the threshold sets the bar at which all signal above it is squashed down by a certain ratio. So a two to one ratio would halve the signal above the threshold. Let's imagine our ratio is four to one, then any signal above the threshold will be compressed down to a quarter of its original site. If you pump in four dB, only one dB comes out above that threshold. Once those peaks have been tamed, then we can make up for that reduction by amping up the entire signal. That's the makeup gain. Kind of using our photo analogy, the compression ratio made the tall person squash down and then the makeup gain was kind of zooming in so that we could kind of see everybody there. Check out the difference between the original and the compressed version much, much hotter. Now let's look at a compression example on an instrument that has a very wide dynamic range. Okay, I want to drop down a bass line into my uh, recorder right here. Have my output of my bass going into the input, which turns up here on my door, which is uh, Propeller Heads Record. You can see that I have the input selected, I have my level set, and everything's pretty good. <laughs> It's about a good level setting right there if I was just playing finger bass, but what if I was slapping bass? Okay, we can see that we are going in the red there and we're going to be distorting our bass. How do we fix that? Well, compression, dynamic compression to the rescue. I have the output of the bass going into this DBX-166 and the output of that guy going into the input. So this effect is inserted between the bass and the input and this has been bypassed the whole time. If I put that into the chain, actually it's got a noise gate as well, I don't know whether you heard that, it just kind of kills the noise between me playing, but now with that compressor there, I can slap and I will not get into the red. So you can go from fingering Dynamic compression is your friend. So here are the typical controls on your average compressor. The threshold is where the compressor kicks in. Any signal below the threshold is not affected. We then have the ratio, which is how much compression, two to one or four to one. Note that this only affects the material that lives above that threshold. Then we have the makeup gain, where we can amp up that resulting signal, confident there won't be any you know, big peaks that will distort through there. Now there are typically two more controls on a compressor and they are attack and release. Attack defines how quickly the compressor reacts once that threshold has been passed. Fast attacks clamp down on the signal immediately. Slower attacks lets the initial transient go through before the uh, signal is compressed. Well, you might think, why would you want a slower attack on your compressor? Sometimes the first few milliseconds of a sound can really define it and you may not want to actually have that compressed. Take toms for example. The sound of a tom is really two sounds. The initial attack, the stick sound, and then the, uh, the tone of the drum as it resonates. The, the kind of the T and the boom after that. If you set the attack to be really short, then the stick sound will get compressed. If you slow that down, that attack just a little, the initial stick sound will come through giving you a much better uh, um, attack and then the compressor will take care of the boominess after that and clamp that down. Now the release is how long the compressor holds onto the sound before it kind of lets go. These are really fine details to go into, you know, particularly when compression uh, you know, is new to you, but for most applications, just set the attack and release to about halfway or you know, 12 o'clock position, and then you even press the auto setting if there's a button right there. Now, limiting is really just a compressor that has an infinity to one ratio. Once the signal gets to a certain threshold, it just hangs onto it and doesn't allow the signal to get any bigger than that. It's, I mean, it's kind of like the ultimate bouncer at the door. It doesn't let 
anything get past it above a certain threshold. Uh, some people even call you know, them brick wall limiters. A limiter is good for a number of applications. Um, one application I use for all the time is for in-ear monitors. When a musician on stage places an in-ear monitor just miller, millimeters from their eardrums, do you really want to, you know, you really want to be sure that the volume doesn't take off with feedback or anything. Place a limiter in line with the monitors and it's a great safety barrier for that.